bounty found. Baby, I got the wheels. I make the deals. Daniel Bloodworth, here we are for Hunt Down. As we know, this is very exciting. It's finally passed its exclusivity window and it's being released on Steam to the masses. And along with the release of it, they are including a brand new arcade mode, which we'll talk to everyone today a little bit about, give you an idea about what's going on with it. Yeah, Don, but, what, uh, is, what is Hunt Down for the uninitiated? Like, yeah, what, for the un like You've done an, an amazing job presenting this game the, the past few times <laughs> that you've done it, but now yeah, you've gotten a it, chance to get back into this. How are you feeling about like a year later? I'm feeling great. Uh, for anyone that's unfamiliar, maybe not as familiar, so Hunt Down is a game released last year. It's absolutely one of my GOATI contenders, if not probably my GOATI, honestly, nominee if I made one. But uh, just a really beautiful retro style, uh, run and gun, cover based sort of shooter. You've got action, a little bit of platforming, uh, just a plethora of weapons, just really detailed animations and a reminiscent of a, you know, arcade shooter similar to maybe Metal Slug or something like that. And uh, just an unbelievable soundtrack and everything about it kind of just fits gels together in this really tight complete package that um, I'm in love with and it was created by a very small team also uh, easy trigger games and so it's really exciting to see just such a small group of people put together something so polished and spectacular like this I had so much fun playing it last year but yeah I haven't played for at least a couple months and so this was the perfect opportunity with the uh, steam release and the arcade mode to jump back in and see what I found, and I was pleasantly surprised. You wanna play with me? Yeah, so it's interesting, you know, when they say arcade mode, because you're describing this as like arcade style game to begin with. Yeah. What do you think distinguishes the main game um, from like a you know, like a, a game that you would expect to see in an arcade, like a Metal Slug or something. When they first announced that it was going to include an arcade mode, is the, uh, that's what immediately struck me. I said, well, what? It already felt like an arcade game. What could they really add to this other than, you know, I was basically imagining upping the difficulty and limiting the continuability in some fashion, right? And I didn't know how they were going to implement that. But it turns out they added more than I expected. That's thoughtfully done. Uh, First of all, points. When you're playing an arcade, your high score is such a like primary centerpiece to this. And so that's what they've done. A lot of what they've done in this is really bring the points that you're getting as front and center element to it. Whereas before, it honestly wasn't something I paid a whole lot of attention to. So now, every single kill you get, your opponents are dropping little skulls that you collect for points. When you're when you're doing damage on enemies and bosses, you're seeing the little digits pop up, classic arcade style points are all there. And then they've added a whole bunch of new sort of collectibles and treasure items, which are all, you know, putting points front and center. So you're really paying attention to your score now. And uh, they've also, what they've done which I love, they haven't limited your continues, but they've limited, so every time you choose to continue, if you get to that point, uh, they're gonna subtract some from your high score. Mm. So you're absolutely Got not it. gonna be able to get the same score if you have to continue. The way you approach the arcade mode, first of all, they've added some really cool new art screens when you're first getting into it from the menu, which is really nice stuff. But you enter the mode and you get to choose from one of the four areas, one of the four gangs that you're going up against. And the idea is that you've got to take on this whole gang, which is one set of sub-levels, all in one go, without saving, okay? You can continue, but you can't save. If you're in story mode, you can enter the game, re-enter it at every any level and uh, continue to play. So now you've got to beat this whole, each section basically in one go in order to receive a high score and get on the leaderboards. And so it's awesome because you're trying not to continue, you're trying not to lose points, but they've also added in a bunch of stuff like kill streaks, okay? And oh, these nice. are animated on the screen with visuals that are showing you kill streaks, that are showing you special kills. You knock someone down a hole, you know, you mm -hmm. light someone on fire, all sorts of different custom ways to kill someone. That's gonna be acknowledged. So this is all stuff you're paying attention to now 
And they've also added all these new audio cues. So the same announcer, which has the really cool, you know, movie theater trailer kind of action voice that they had before doing the voiceover has added in a whole bunch of new dialogue underneath while you're playing as well. So that's the centerpiece now. That's how it's structured. And so it makes it really interesting to go into because they've tweaked the challenge a little bit. So you're also competing against these leaderboards. So it kind of freshens up the game in that way for sure. But the other thing that they've done re that's really neat that I didn't expect is they've switched up uh, the encounters, the enemy encounters mm. throughout the that's game. That's so just about to ask. That's funny. It's really awesome. It works so good because it wasn't the game where you were ever getting random enemy spawns. So if you're pretty familiar with the game already you're going through not on autopilot because you got to pay attention in this game but you know you know what sections get intense what who's going to be suddenly popping out suddenly a guy on a motorcycle is going to be here this and that they've kept some of it the same but they've switched up quite a bit of it so you really got to stay on your toes some areas that you always were like a real hassle to get through are suddenly kind of easy and then other areas out of nowhere are like really difficult that you've got to rethink now re-strategize and it's brutal because the arcade mode is all based on you know keeping your kill streaks going and i found myself so many times i'd be in like you know two or three levels into the into the stage that i needed to complete and I die a couple times, I'm screwing up my score, I have to continue this and that, and suddenly I'm like, you know what, I'd rather just jump back to the beginning, quit, yep, yep, yep. start over, because I, I know I can do better. I mean, take away the score, because of the, the gameplay mechanics, it's such a satisfying feeling to be using these weapons, to be killing your opponents in these different ways, the way they blow up, the way they get chopped up, whatever it is, that just for gameplay-wise, you're in all these little micro sections, you know you can do it better just in terms of satisfying yourself viscerally. So even beyond the score, you're always wanting to kind of like do sections a certain kind of way and be like, oh man, that was awesome how I wiped out all yeah, these, you know. Get the, get the rhythm down. Exactly. So they've gone beyond though just switching up enemy encounters. They've added all kinds of little details. You know, you, you always found the hidden stashes before. Now it's like a bunch of items pop out of the suitcase. You're not just getting the points, but mm. like a little gold watch or whatever, jewels and money will pop out. And they've added a lot of extra little collectibles, gold bars and little new icons, you know, which is neat to see, freshens it up. But also the boss encounters are slightly tweaked. So from what I played, I didn't notice any big like pattern changes or anything like that. But like, for instance, like, uh, Murdoch, one opponent you face, I, they, I noticed suddenly they take out the landmines or they might take out some of the, uh, you know, NPC fodder that he throws at you, you know, different guys are going to pop up. So it just keeps you on your toes. It freshens it up in a really fun way. And it's just get, get bring. it gave to me a whole new level of appreciation. It's like I'm back in love with this game. And so it's quite a thrill. I'm pretty impressed with how much they retooled things, actually, you know. Yeah, that's out uh, on Steam this week, right? I believe it comes out, yeah, on the 12th. It's just an incredible game. I mean, the music, and especially, it's funny, you know, I had it on, I was mainly playing it on my Switch version before. I played either off my TV or straight off my handheld, but playing it just like, you know, with my headphones and everything, it just gives me that much more of an appreciation with it, playing it in a slightly different way, you know? I've really enjoyed so far, uh, just such an incredible game, so much fun. And now that they've got you with this uh, arcade mode, it just, oh man, it's such a hard thing to step away from, because it's like, every single time you're like, I know I can do that slightly better. Yeah, it, it's funny you're reminding me of this game like right now because I'm putting my list together for like what the poll for Blood Pack will be and like, oh yeah, I should put Hunt Down on the list. It's still on my backlog. Let me see if see if people vote for me to play Hunt Down among one of these other games. But Blood, you're gonna love it. It's so fun. One of the things too that I don't know if I'd mentioned before, and I won't ruin anything, but they put in so many thoughtful Easter eggs, you know. Oh yeah, and the nods, this, huh? The nods, beyond nods. I mean, homage is really. It. I won't ruin what they do, but it's like the whole game. A lot of it they've talked about. You know, Easy Trigger talked about how it's inspired by a lot of 80s, early 90s, kind of even late 70s action movies. You know, popcorn kind of movies and so the whole game has that kind of sense of humor and style in it but there's specific movies that seem to serve as greater inspiration and the easter eggs they've put in is just it's like nothing i've seen in other games do in the way they've done it and it's the most thrilling thing to find these easter eggs and i was reminded that again of just how special some of that stuff is and there's a ton of hidden stuff you know little secrets in the game so if you like that kind of thing too there's just a lot of thought put into it. So yeah, falling in love with it all over again. Nice. Well, I'm glad to give you another chance to talk about one of your favorite games last year. 
Yes. Um, and then hopefully, yeah, as it's coming to Steam, a lot more people will get to enjoy it. I hope so. I hope you all give it a shot. Have some fun. Go out there and hunt down. Double kill strike bonus. Who brings a door to a gunfight? Feels like Christmas. Kick shot, double kill. You're dead.